listen to all that I've muttered Your life will only go well if you win wisdom or lovers Good afternoon. You are listening to For the Love of Wisdom, where philosophy meets the streets. And this is your host, JC Johnson. We are live here on North Coast Underground, and we are at the top of the five o'clock hour right now. Today, we are discussing the wisdom of equity, right? So, we're talking about how to treat people justly, how to treat people fairly, and everything that we do, right? So, we're going to get more on that after this. You don't want to go anywhere. We're on North Coast Underground. Hey, what's going on, Wisdom Family? Each week on For the Love of Wisdom, we promote a new and free audiobook that we believe you will benefit from and become wiser by listening to. On today's show, we're talking about the wisdom of equity. And so, the recommended book for this week is Can American Capitalism Survive? by Stephen Pearlstein. This book explains how our economic system gradually has undermined our sense of community by glorifying greed rather than fairness. To download this free book today, just visit audibletrial.com slash love wisdom. Audibletrial.com slash love wisdom. All right, welcome back. You're listening to For the Love of Wisdom. This is your host, J.C. Johnson. And, you know, today we are talking about equity. And in hour one, you know, we pretty much went over what equity is about. We talked about what it isn't. And just as a, you know, a quick recap, we basically said that equity is the quality of being equal or fair. It's about being impartial. It's about uh, showing kindness, demonstrating equal rights. It's about symmetry, really, when you think of equity. It's about being even, about being just. So if you missed hour one, you can always listen to past episodes on iTunes, uh, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, Google Play Music. Or if you have an Amazon Alexa enabled device, you can just say Alexa. Play for the love of wisdom and you'll be able to, you know, hear the show that way. So you can always stay up with what's going on. And right now I'm about to go live for a little bit on Instagram. So if you want to join in on the conversation on there, you definitely can. Um, You can hit me up on Instagram. You can find me on uh, one plan media. All right. So. That's One Plan Media. That's the Instagram handle. And I'll be on there in just a second. So right now, basically, uh, we're talking about uh, the book of the week. And, you know, every week there's pretty much um, a different book that I like to focus on, something that I I think um, properly Uh, goes into the topic whatever the topic is something that is kind of you know gonna allow us to go deeper Um, and one one book that I think is really good um, it's actually technically not out yet Um, it has been uh, a portion of it has been released just for review purposes but this is a it's a great book it's actually coming out on September 25th and it's called can American capitalism survive So this is a pretty cool book um, just from from what I've checked out so far. I think that um, it's something that will definitely uh, at least start a good conversation. You know, not everyone is going to agree with what this this author has to say, because basically it is it is asking the question, does capitalism work? Right. Um, Does a capitalistic society produce the types of results that we hope that it will and basically you know what he's saying here is that in times past it was a good thing however 
the the capitalistic system has been abused in many ways and the thing that it was supposed to to do which you know was supposed to help people it's actually kind of doing the opposite so we're going to get into a little bit of what he has to say but just um some notes from the book um or just you know something that describes what it's about he says here that you know 30 years ago the whole greed is good and maximizing shareholder value right he, he's talking about how these things became the new mantras woven into the fabric of our business culture economy and politics so he said although around the world free market capitalism has lifted more than a billion people from poverty in the united states most of the benefits of economic growth have been captured by the richest 10 percent along with providing justification for squeezing workers cheating customers avoiding taxes and leaving communities in the lurch so he says as a result americans are losing faith that a free market economy is the best system so that is a, a mouthful of information right but basically what he's trying to say is that you know capitalism could work if more people were benefiting from it but what he's saying is it's really only 10 percent of the population that's really being positively affected by it and globally if you look at it if if only one percent of the global population um is at the top then that's not really fair or equal across the board now i'm not saying that people shouldn't become wealthy or shouldn't have that opportunity because i think that people should have that opportunity i don't personally disagree with capitalism but i think that the problem is that there's not enough incentive for the one percent or in this case in the u.s the ten percent to help the rest of the population to achieve that same success or at least something similar so you know i'm not one of those people that says oh you know the rich should be punished but at the same time i do think that if you know how to get to a certain place then you should educate those around you and you know some i, I think that you know the the most successful people honestly they're people who know that if they help others to achieve it's only going to make them more successful anyway so that's something that we talked about last week when we were talking about generosity right so a person who is you know scared they're going to say well i don't want to you know share my secrets with people i don't want anyone else to know how i achieve this level of success because then they'll become my competition but you know real you know smart business people will say the more people I help, the more successful I'll become. And so that's why, you know, when people put out like certain certain books about, let's just say, you know, how to um, how to accomplish a certain thing or how to achieve a certain level of success or, you know, how to um, make a particular impact in their sector or whatever. Uh, and it's something that people find helpful and it's something that actually makes people successful they'll go out and tell everyone about it. So instead of these people becoming their competition, really all it does is help to promote their brand. It helps to make people consider this person more legit, right? So there's, there's really no downside to being generous. There's no downside to treating people fairly by giving them information because ultimately it will help you. But um, one, one thing he said in here, um, well, at least this this is the publisher's note. It says um, Stephen Perlstein, who who wrote this book, uh, he basically chronicles our descent and challenges the theories being taught in business schools and exercised in boardrooms around the country, because you know it says that we're missing a key tenet of Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations, right? And so that's something else to check out. But he says here, without trust and social capital democratic capitalism cannot survive so i'll say that again without trust and social capital democratic capitalism cannot survive so um 
equality of incomes and opportunity need not come at the expense of economic growth. Uh, and so this is uh, really a, a book that I think goes deep into some of the issues that we're facing. And there's people on both sides of the the argument, you know, you know, those who are um, hardcore um, advocates for capitalism will say, you know, the opposite of that would be a socialistic society. And we don't want that. We don't want there to be a, a cap on how much money people can make or, you know, we don't want the government to regulate everything that we do. And I, I definitely agree with that. I don't think that that's the purpose of the government. The government is not supposed to um, hinder people from growing. You know, that I, that would be the opposite of the American dream. But I think that what we can take away from socialism and that kind of thought is the whole idea of, you know, it's cool that you're making money. It's, it's good that you're prospering and that your business is growing. But don't forget to treat people fairly in the process. Don't, you know, just pay everyone else the lowest minimum wage possible while you're making billions. But let's share the wealth. Right. So but more on that after this, you're listening to North Coast Underground, where the underground starts with you. And this is your host, J.C. Johnson, for the love of wisdom, where philosophy meets the streets. All right. We'll be right back after this. You're now listening to For the Love of Wisdom on NorthCoastUnderground.com, where the underground starts with who? No other but you. All right. Welcome back. This is J.C. Johnson for The Love of Wisdom, where philosophy meets the streets. All right. And today we're pretty much we're talking about the wisdom of equity. All right. And before the break, we were taking a look at a book by Stephen Perlstein, and it's called Can American Capitalism Survive? And I think that this is a really insightful book. It's pretty weighty. It, you know, it's not necessarily... Uh, a bedtime story for the kids type of thing but i think that there's a lot of things here that actually are good to share with your children of course in a way that they can understand but this is something that's really important um it speaks about the current state of our society and it talks about how pretty much we're not going to survive if we if we keep doing things the way that we've been doing it a few quotes from the book that that really stood out to me here before we continue um one is he said it was only 25 years ago that the world was celebrating the triumph of american capitalism after a long cold war communism had been vanquished and discredited with china russia and eastern europe seemingly rushing to embrace the market system right so basically it's saying that um around the world this embrace of market capitalism would lift more than a billion people from poverty which is a good thing that's an awesome thing because people are now seeing, OK, I can not just, you know, just make ends meet, not just barely make it, but I can actually thrive in this society. I can actually, you know, do something that's going to put myself and my family in an awesome financial place. So capitalism has done a lot of good. So here here are some of the issues. It says in the years since, however, Confidence in the superiority of the American system has badly eroded. A global financial crisis that started in Asia and spread to Russia and Latin America shattered the Washington consensus. Americans have lived through the bursting of two financial bubbles, struggled through two serious recessions, and toiled through several decades in which almost all of the benefits of economic growth have been captured by the richest 10% of households. And that's the, the whole issue here that he's talking about. It's, it's not that making money is bad or becoming wealthy is bad. It's, it's a good thing. However, what he's saying is that when only 10% of the population uh, are actually attaining this, then it, it really becomes counterproductive. Right. Because how does that help the rest of society if not everyone is, is benefiting? You know, and again, there are people on the other side of the of the argument of capitalism, people who are advocates of socialism, who would say that 
you know the government the, the government needs to put regulations on how much money a person can make or the way that people are taxed you know in order to make things more fair but the thing with that is if somebody is a legitimate business person somebody you know put in the hard work to grow their business and get to the place where they are able to achieve a mass amount of wealth then you know they shouldn't be punished for that right you know they shouldn't be punished for becoming successful but the argument has always been but how do you how do you reconcile the two right how do you encourage people to to make money to attain success in this country but at the same time put regulations in place so that things are equitable or fair across the board and this is something that i don't think can be resolved in any simple conversation or even through legislation that the government can impose i think that this is less of a legal issue or a political issue honestly i think it's more of a moral issue right because if a person is a billionaire and you know someone who lives five blocks away from them is below the poverty line they are not obligated right to help that person they're not obligated to share the wealth that they've accumulated um there's no law that says they have to however morally i think that if a person knows how to do something they should share it with others and part of what we talked about during the break is there are some who are afraid to share that kind of information because they're afraid that you know people will become their competition but most people who are not only successful but people who who continue to have that success and who actually make an impact are people who are not afraid to share their secrets people who are not afraid to let other people know how they did it because that's really the only way that you can um, encourage that that uh that system that 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 uh that realm that area that you're working in right because one day you're going to either get too old or you're going to pass away and if you're the only one that knows how to do something then that that industry will fail right but if you teach other people how to do what you're doing it's only going to increase that particular sector it's only going to increase the economy it's going to make things better and you know one thing in school you know in schools people don't talk about this too much you know we we learn uh you know math science the basics <clears throat> but there's not a lot of emphasis put on how you can create wealth and sustain wealth you know it's more so how can you just get by you know just enough and there are people plenty of people who i think would be able to teach others how to do it but it's just not something that's really so encouraged in our society and i think that that's definitely something that would help a lot of the situations that we see today so it's not about putting a ban on the wealthy it's not about saying they're not allowed to accumulate a certain amount or that they have to be forced to share or to be taxed heavily but i think that really it should be um this is a moral conversation this is you know how can we encourage people to to make their own decision to share the wealth not even just financially but the wealth of knowledge right how can how can people feel a sense of camaraderie with you know with, uh, amongst their their fellow citizens to say you know i have a moral duty to make sure that i'm passing on what i know so that other people can be where i'm at so i'm not up here at the top by myself right i can share the wealth with those who are, are around me so i think that that's really the thing so a couple quotes from some noteworthy people here when it comes to equity that i think are pretty good uh the first one is from h jackson brown jr and he said live so that when your children 
think of fairness, caring, and integrity, they think of you. Now that is that's a that's a huge charge right there. That's a a lot of responsibility. You might say, well, you know, that's a little bit too much. You know, I at least just need to know that I I need them to know that I'm the one that you know can pick them up after school or whatever. I don't know about all of that, but hey, you have to remember, you know, your your kids are looking at you. You're the you're the example. Right. So you're the person that they look up to and, you know, they they want to know um, who they should become. And, and they do that by looking at you. They learn from their their friends. They learn from their teachers. They learn from their favorite musicians and actors. But above all of them, they're looking at you. Here's another one is from uh, Daniel Kahneman. And he says, Employers who violate rules of fairness are punished by reduced productivity and merchants who follow unfair pricing policies can expect to lose sales. So people who try to cut corners or to take advantage of people in hopes of gaining more, you know, it looks like they end up only hurting themselves. So that's not a good thing. But more on that after this, you're listening to North Coast Underground, where the underground starts with you. We'll be right back. Northcoastunderground.com. It's your boy, Tear It Up, Tommy Tom from Beyond Sports, and you're listening to For the Love of Wisdom with your host, Jason Johnson. Right. Welcome back. You're listening to For the Love of Wisdom, where philosophy meets the streets. And, you know, we're on North Coast Underground, where the underground starts with you. All right. So on today's episode, we are talking about the wisdom of equity. Right. And that's not necessarily talking about the equity that you have in your house um although as far as the root of it all it all you know it all adds up but what we're focusing on specifically we're talking about equity in the sense of equality fairness justness you know treating people the right way treating people how we want to be treated that's what equity is about and we looked at a a couple quotes Uh, Before the break from some notable people Quote from H. Jackson Brown Live so that when your children think of fairness, caring, and integrity They think of you Another one from Daniel Kahneman Employers who violate rules of fairness Are punished by reduced productivity And merchants who follow unfair pricing policies Can expect to lose sales Right. So people who try to cut corners uh, People who don't treat others fairly they're going to suffer ultimately. See, greed, greed is not the way to go, right? So let's look at a couple other ones here. There's one here from Barbara Boxer. And here's what she had to say. She says, we are all different, yet we are all God's children. We are all united behind this country and the common cause of freedom, justness, fairness, and equality. That is what unites us. So I'm going to read that one more time. It says we are all different. Okay, so this has to do with what we were talking about during the first hour. Uh, There was an article that was written by a parent and she talked about how she was one, one thing that she learned by becoming a parent is that it's not about treating your children equally in all circumstances it's about treating them fairly and what that means is that something that is in the best interest of one child may not be in the best interest of the other child so it's not always about having a cookie cutter approach to parenting or to anything in life really it's about taking things on a case-by-case basis and doing the thing that you know is going to ultimately benefit that person the most because everyone is different even identical twins are different you know because if they were both the same they would both have the same dna uh they would be undistinguishable you know they would have the exact same thoughts at the exact same time and they would always be similar but that's that's not the case so That's something that um, I think that we all can 
learn from really you know regardless of your situation whether you are a parent and it has to do with you know raising children or you know even if you're an employer and we're talking about equity in the workplace or in your friendships you know what whatever situation you find yourself in being equitable uh, treating others the way that we would want to be treated you know sometimes it takes some it takes some knowledge right it takes knowing that person because what works for one may not work for another and it's also knowing yourself it's knowing your motives it's knowing your strengths and it's knowing your limitations because ultimately that's going to impact how you treat people uh, here's one from Winnie Mandela all right so I think this is pretty powerful she said <clears throat> I'm not ashamed of anything she said I'm not ashamed of anything I've ever done in the name of fairness and justice for my people and that's awesome and that's something to think about because it's one thing to be ashamed because you did the wrong thing you set somebody's house on fire then I can understand being ashamed of that or regretting that right but if you did something that's right and maybe you you suffered some ridicule or persecution as a result of it it's a good thing you know it's a good thing that you stood for what is right more people need to take a stand for what is right and not worry about the consequences because there's never a downside to doing the right thing it may not be what's comfortable but ultimately it's going to be good and if you if you think about it you know one one thing we're going to speak about in a future episode we're going to be talking about the wisdom of eternity but one thing that you have to keep in mind is that we're here in this life for only a short amount of time, right? And nobody is, you know, we're, we're not all even guaranteed the same amount of time. Some people live for 100 years. Some people live for 25 years. Some people live for one day. Some people live for three months, right? Some people live for 115 years, whatever. There's all different types of lifespans that people have and there's no guarantee there's no guarantee you know it's, it's not like when you're born it's not you're not like a gallon of milk you're not born with your expiration date written on your forehead so that everyone knows how much time you have no that that's something that is a mystery it's a secret it's something that only God knows only God knows what each person's expiration date is. And so we can't necessarily say, well, I have time. I have time to do the right thing in this, you know, in this circumstance or whatever. I don't have to do it today. I can wait until next year or I can wait until next week. But no, we can't say that because the amount of time that we have to do anything is really something that has not been revealed to us. It's not something we're, we've been made privy to. So every opportunity that we have every day, every second, that's when we, we should be thinking about doing the right thing. Because ultimately, when it's all said and done and a person is, you know, when a person does exit this life and a person does enter into eternity, right, you're, you're going to be only known for what you did here in this life that's your legacy that's what's going to influence those that come after you to either do what's right or to do what's wrong and because of fear of persecution and backlash and ridicule there are a lot of people in the world that we live in today who are afraid to do the right thing and sometimes it's not even because of persecution. Sometimes they're afraid of doing the right thing 
because they feel like it's not profitable to them, right? So they say, well, hey, nobody's going to know if I steal this hundred dollars from this person or whatever, right? So they, they figure, why not do it? But what they're missing out on, the, the, the point that they're missing is that this has a negative outcome, ultimately, because you're stealing money to avoid being financially bankrupt. But in the process, you've become morally bankrupt. You've, you've become intellectually bankrupt, spiritually bankrupt. So what good is that money if your soul is suffering, if your soul is not rich? But more on that after this. You're listening to North Coast Underground, where the underground starts with you. You're listening to For the Love of Wisdom, where philosophy meets the streets. With your host, Jason Johnson. All right, welcome back. You're listening to For the Love of Wisdom, where philosophy meets the streets. And of course, you know we're on North Coast Underground, where the underground starts with you. Also, we're on Instagram Live right now. If you want to tune in, uh, leave your two cents, just go to One Plan Media, and that's on Instagram. All right, so today, since we're, we're talking about the wisdom of equity, and as we're getting ready to conclude for the afternoon, I'd like to just take a look at what we've, what we've gone over so far. Basically, we're talking about equity in the sense of treating people fairly, doing what's right. And I think that the best way to truly sum up you know, this topic and any topic is to take a look at the source of all wisdom. This show is a show about wisdom and philosophy. And, you know, God, I believe God is the author of wisdom. And so I think we should take a look at what he has to say about this topic. Now, um, if we, you know, at the beginning of the show, we looked at what Jesus said, you know, when he talked about basically doing to others what you want people to do to you or for you Um, in James chapter 2 verses 1 through 5 uh, it says something here that I think is equally helpful and it says don't treat some people better than others suppose someone comes into your meeting wearing very nice clothes and a gold ring at the same time A poor person comes in wearing old, dirty clothes, and you show special attention to the person wearing nice clothes. So you say, sit here in this good seat. But you say to the poor person, hey, you know, stand there or sit on the floor by our feet. Doesn't this show that you think that some people are more important than others? So you set yourself up as judges and judges who make bad decisions. So you know, basically, you know, what this is uh, saying right here, and we're, you know, joined right now on uh, Instagram Live by Steel Strong, HWF, what's going on? Uh, but what this is saying here, basically, is that, you know, when you, when you treat a person better than another person based on their socioeconomic status, or because of the type of clothing that they're wearing, or because of any superficial reason basically what you're trying to what you're saying is that you are judging that one person's worth is greater than another person's worth and really we can't do that as as fellow human beings we can't do that um we can't ascribe worth to people because all of us have the equal amount of worth so let's let's go on and, and look at what a couple other passages of scripture have to say on this topic in uh, Proverbs chapter 11 verses 24 and 25 it says that some people give freely and gain more while others refuse to give and they end up with less that's something to think about right it says give freely and you will profit help others and you will gain more for yourself so in the in the grand scheme of things you know what this is saying is being a hoarder being a hoarder is not something that's helpful. A 
person who tries to hold back out of fear of not having enough for themselves is saying that they're missing the whole point because it's the whole law of reaping and sowing, sowing and reaping, right? What you give out is what is going to come back to you. That's just the way that this world works. That's the way that everything works. That's the way that agriculture works. That's the way that relationships work. Everything follows the same principle. And this principle was set in motion by God. And he's the one who created people. And he's the one who, who really created um, the resources for us to be able to use in this life. And if, we, if you feel like you're going to gain by by keeping more for yourself then ultimately you're not going to you're not going to gain at the end of it because you're going to be by yourself for one and two you never know when someone else may need to help you right so you might think that you're good right now you say well i don't have any struggles i don't have any issues i don't need to help anybody else but one day one day that time is going to come where you do have to help somebody else and, or, or someone is going to need to help you. And if you have a reputation of never giving, but only receiving, then that's not a favorable situation for you in the grand scheme of things. Right. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, a couple more here. Romans chapter two, verses nine through 11. It says that God will give trouble and suffering to everyone who does evil, but he will give glory, honor and peace to everyone who does good. It says that God judges everyone the same. It doesn't matter who they are. And this is something important to remember. God is impartial. So he doesn't say, well, hey, you have Jordans and that person has some shoes from Payless. So therefore, you are a better person than that person. No, you know, God is not like man. He's not like human beings. He doesn't make those kind of decisions you know god looks at the heart and ultimately whether a person is good or evil god still takes care of everyone he still treats everyone fairly whether they deserve it or not i know i don't deserve any good thing that comes from god but it doesn't stop him from giving me anything good and that's how god wants us to be towards one another he doesn't want us to be partial he wants us to be fair across the board no matter what. That's why when you look at it, you know, when, when someone's in prison, they may have they may be a serial rapist and murderer and they've done so many evil things. Right. However, um, because they're still a citizen, because they're still under the care of the government, you know, when they're in prison, at least they're supposed to anyway, they, they're still given food to eat. Right. They're still given a place to sleep. Now, I'm not saying that prison is the place to be. But, you know, the basic human essentials they give to everyone, regardless of if they're in there for tax evasion or if they're in there for murder. Everyone receives the bare necessities, the basic essentials. So that's all we have for today. This is J.C. Johnson. Be here with you next time on North Coast Underground. Is power. power is money and money makes the world go right. I get it, higher, learning, yeah, I'm with it Only get better with time, you got on my mind with wisdom There's no limit, there's no limit Get up and get it, can achieve the impossible Conquer every obstacle, exhaust and grind And constantly push and do what they say I could Life is what you make it Knowledge is power, don't let them take it This has been a presentation of the Ohio Media School. Jam, man. Work it. Turn the whole thing. Northcoastunderground.com, where the underground starts with you.